What's going on fellas, Exotic here, and today I'm gonna do a guide on how to set up this seemingly complicated Shutoku traffic on your Shutoku Revival project map. So first things first fellas, as you can see there will be a lot of spline lines and so on. So the first thing that I want to start is, this is in Ray's department, all the links will be down in the description. So fellas, how to make a free account on Ray's department, let me show you real quick. So you go in here, I'm in incognito tab, so I'm not logged in, you click on register, and the first thing that pops up is the paid plan, so you skip them, you scroll to the bottom, and you will see, join with the basic account here, you click here, and there you go, you're now on the registration page where you can make a free account. Next up, fellas, is you download the Shutoku traffic. All right, fellas, so we can continue together. I have deleted my own Shutoku Revival project, so now I'm going to install or update it. I will continue with a clean installation of mine. I will literally do it step by step together. So I want you now to drag and drop this into Content Manager. Now you see it's searching for content, so take your time. It, will, it might take a minute. All right, fellas, so it was searching for quite a bit. Now, once it's ready, for you it will be install. For me, it will be update. You click install. All right, fellas, we've just installed Shutok Revival Project. I will go very briefly on the settings so we don't waste too much time uh, talking about them. They are pretty common sense. I know probably most of you know, but for the people that don't know, we'll go now. Now, opponent's trade basically treated as the difficulty of the cars. And aggression again. So basically... The strength is how well the car, the, the bot is driving. Aggression is how, basically how risky do you want the bot to drive? Do you want the bot to go for invisible gaps basically in the race? Because that's what you will see. And uh, sometimes I've seen crazy stuff from the bots when you put these 200. Now opponents, here you want to use traffic cars. And by the way, you will be using track day. You will see why in a moment. So you see, I have a lot of traffic cars. My advice is take something slow to medium and maybe here and there uh, some fast car. Don't blast too, like, just... If you if you put normal cars, it, it might go crazy. Uh, or uh, like race cars. They will go too fast, they will crash into traffic cars, it will become a mess. Now, going to settings, new AI behavior. Of course, this you keep active. This you keep active as well. AI tweaks basically fixes some of the bugs and uh, so on with the bots. Extra options for AI splines. This actually is very useful because if you're on a budget PC and you don't want to wait a longer time to load, these two options will help you with the loading times. This one and this one. Now, allow to drive wrong way offline mode. Pretty self-explanatory. We always want to drive the opposite side. So I advise you to just keep these two. You don't want to get kicked uh, while you're playing on offline mode. Now, fellas, AI Flood works in track day mode. Keep this active. Minimum track length. Don't go below 1000 is my advice. You can also hover over this and just uh, hold with the mouse. It will show or explain. there will be explanation of the option as well. High driver names. Uh, I advise to use this so it, the names of the bots don't distract you or uh, other stuff. Uh, push force and push speed. So basically, push speed is how much do you limit the cars to drive with? What, what speed do you want the bots to be driving with? This is how much do you limit them? In, in my case, at the moment, is 90 kilometers. Push force is basically how fast do you want the bots to accelerate when they're spawned? So we have 150k. And uh, basically, you can see very well explained. Gets newly spawned AIs to get to, sp to the speed faster but might cause damage to the cars and result in broken cars on the side of the road. Okay, fellas, now shuffle behavior. Or if you set it on auto, it will randomly limit the throttle speeds, the max speed, uh, the respawn distance and stuff like that. But if you select never, you will have no changes whatsoever. The bots will just keep following the values that we have set in. And uh, I honestly prefer never, but if you like realism and you want sudden changes and stuff like that to mimic that, then I advise you to use auto. Now, fellas, how to install the more settings? You have to go to documents on your PC, Acero Corsa, CFG, and extensions. Now, on extensions, you will find new behavior. And uh, you open it either with Notepad or Notepad++. You can see I now have uh, Notepad++. We're going to close this. Now, next, what I'm going to do, you can see already preset settings from the content manager. However, we're going to place 
the already done and recommended settings from the guy who made the supply lines and was already testing for a long time. You can imagine only how much time he spent making the, the settings. So what we're gonna do, we're literally replacing absolutely everything. We're gonna do Control S, we're gonna save the settings and we're gonna close the notepad. All right, fellas, now onto the hardest part. We go and open the WinRAR or the zip file that you have and we have the traffic ready. So what we have to do, we go to content, we go to tracks and we look for Shutoku. I'm going to click and press S to find, uh, jump into the S folders and we found Shutoku project beta. I had to re-delete the folder because I made a mistake. Uh, it was not deleted completely. So what we have now and uh, why everyone is getting confused or most people uh, on installing traffic as uh, complicated as it seems it's actually very easy so let me explain it will be a lot of just copy paste fellas and we'll do just a tiny trick for uh, OIPA so we're gonna start with, uh, with a quick explanation of uh, how the AI works so less restricted will enable the AI to overtake only on the right side so if the right side for the AI is free they will be able to overtake. That means if the AI is on the left lane, he will be able to go and overtake on the middle. If he's on the middle, he will be able to overtake on the fast lane, which is the, the right right lane. Going to the rapid, rapid will literally allow the AI to overtake everywhere where the roads are wide. So as far as I understand it, that means they will literally be able to as well go and overtake from the left side, right side. I I'm not sure to be honest, but I think this is the chaotic way. So if you want a very aggressive overtakes and stuff like that, you might use the rapid AI. Unrestricted fell is very simple. It prevents any attempts for overtaking. So you have the cars fixed on the lane they spawn. They will literally sit on the same lane and not overtake or move from it. Now the layout that I'm going to use files is less restricted because it was recommended by the person who explained and made this uh, guy with the supply lines. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open this and you can see for the less restricted we have these two files. <clears throat> there we go. Uh, what we need now is to go back a folder and we're going to start, let's start with Daishi PA. All right, so when you open Daishi PA in the WinRAR file, which, which is the traffic, and uh, we go to a set of course of uh, uh, Shutoku folder, we open Daishi PA as well. Uh, what we see first, fellas, is we don't have the AI folder, but we have the data folder. So all we need is just to place the hints from the data folder, and then we go back one folder more, and we are going to copy the AI from here. Now, basically what we did, fellas, is we copied the pit lane files from the AI. The AI folder was missing. And one more thing that we did is we copied the hints from the data folder. Now, what we do with these two files is we select them, we press Ctrl and C. We copy them and we put them in the AI folder. So basically, fellas, after you place the file, this is how it should look like in the AI folder you should have on each of these layouts for Shutok Revival, which in our case is Daishi PA, in the AI folder you should have the fast lane and the pit lane payloads. Fast lane payloads for the AI and the pit lane payloads. And on the data folder, you should have the AI hints. Now we're back on the original folder of Shutoko and we're going to repeat this copy paste process to every single of the layouts of this specific track. So let's go with the next ones. Let's go with Kimojima. Hope I pronounce this correctly. If not, it is what it is, fellas. We're gonna copy the AI folder because it's gone here. It's non-existent. Next up, we're gonna copy the hints into the data folder. We're gonna place the hints. We're gonna go back to the AI folder because we have only the pit lanes. We're gonna copy these two files right here. Okay, next up is the Iwajuma PAS. So I guess this is S is for South. We're gonna open this folder. We're gonna copy the AI folder. We're gonna place it here. We need the hints for the data folder. Then we go just one back. We go to the AI and we need these two files in the AI folder. Now we're gonna place uh, for Shiba Ura as well. We go back, 
let's go uh, just back and find where's the shibaura there you go i'm gonna copy the ai folder if you have ai folder uh don't worry for us you just have to place these so we can see that we have already these two files but anyways i'm just gonna copy and replace i don't care next up it, did we put the hints see if I was, I was rushing it i almost forgot the hints so the ai wouldn't know what exactly to do so going now on tatsumi pa let's go back tatsumi pa there we go we don't have the ai folder we're gonna copy boom there we go we're gonna copy the fast lanes which is the layout we're using which is less restricted that means that only the car in the middle can overtake we're gonna go to data we have to go just one folder backwards we're going to data we're gonna copy these hints and we're gonna place them right here uh next up fellas what we need in the ui folder all right we can see that we have oepa so in the ui i will show you fellas what to do so you can see OIPA is missing. So what we're gonna do is uh, in the UI, you wanna copy this folder, place it. Uh, next up, we're gonna copy this because we're missing the OIPA or OIPA. You can see right here, we have the OIPA AI and we need the fast lanes. We're gonna place them right here. Uh, next up is we need the hints so where the hints there we go we have hints but you can already see that the hints were already there all right fellas uh one very important thing that i forgot to do because oepa is in public testing this is currently in test and to make it work you have to do very custom crap so what we're going to do is we're going to copy the models from yoyogi pa and we are going to rename the models so we can make the OIPA work. We're literally going to rename them to OIPA and remove the copy, of course. Now, just give me a second, fellas. Like, no matter how many times I come to this guide, uh, before I release it and make the video, I want to make sure everything is correct. Uh, so, the thing we did is we copied the map for the OIPA, we paste it here. Now we copied the models from Yoyogi and uh, made OIPA models. So this way we're going to make the OIPA work. And one more thing, I can see here there's a PITS file, so we're gonna copy, we're gonna paste it right here. I do believe we will need to uh, rename it. So, uh, what we're missing, did we do all of it? Let's see, I think we're missing the Yoyogi. Let's uh, make the Yogi as well. We're gonna copy the AI folder. Uh, we're gonna copy these. So we have the AI. We're gonna copy and paste these here. Uh, we're gonna take the hints, grab the hints, fellas. Go to data real quick. Copy paste, copy paste. You see, it's super simple. It just takes so much time. Just copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. All right, fellas, we're now in the game. I'm running a replay. I'm going to commentate a bit. I did my best job to try and set up and mimic a realistic traffic. I also, I, I, if I believe, I'm using the auto option, so it's going to shuffle their behaviors. You can see on the right lane, literally the, the lane we are on now, it's supposed to be the fast lane. So that's the fastest lane. And uh, the less restricted fast lane options that we're using allows the traffic from any lane to use the lane on their right side to overtake so if we're on the left lane the traffic can use the right lane to overtake and so on so here you see me doing some uh, stupid crap like uh, drifting and stuff like that the first time i'm testing this car it looked cool so i picked it up so so far the traffic is doing very well I i'm pretty happy how it uh, does for like a single player of course, we cannot mimic a multiplayer server where you can literally customize the values, I believe. Uh, so, so far, having uh, three-lane traffic is absolutely amazing. I will definitely try to make it uh, even more dense and uh, play a bit to the possibilities of the options that we have. <laughs> See, the, the Lambo pulled over. The Beetle from the right, the fast lane, went to the middle and it opened a way for the Lambo. That was funny. So... Pretty cool guys, 
that's a, a quick showcase of how the traffic and the layout that I've set up works. I'm using pretty much about 22 to 23 cars, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So that's it gonna be for today. Wish you all the best. Make sure to like and subscribe. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And we'll see you in the next video.